Japan's labor ministry has certified that a former worker at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is eligible for compensation after developing leukemia. The man in his 50s had worked at the plant for nearly four years since April 2011, soon after the compound suffered multiple meltdowns. Ministry officials say the man was in charge of the plant's mechanical repairs. They say he developed leukemia in January last year and applied for workers' compensation. Ministry officials say the man's radiation exposure has reached 54.4 millisieverts. They decided that the only plausible cause for his cancer was his work at the plant. About 47,000 people have worked at the Fukushima plant in the five years since the accident. The man is the second person to be awarded compensation in connection with the accident. The first case last October involved a man with leukemia. In all, 14 nuclear plant workers in Japan have been granted compensation for having developed work-related cancers. The operator of the crippled nuclear plant in Fukushima wants to restart similar reactors in another part of Japan, Niigata Prefecture. The company has apologized to the governor of the prefecture for concealing multiple meltdowns at the Fukushima plant in 2011. Takafumi Anegawa heads the nuclear department at the Tokyo Electric Power Company. He met with Niigata Governor Hirohiko Izumida. We apologize for failing to investigate enough to properly respond to your inquiries. Nearly five years after the accident, TEPCO executives admitted this February that if they had properly followed their own in-house manual, the meltdowns would have been announced much sooner. They also acknowledged that the company president at the time instructed spokespersons not to use the term core meltdown. The revelation came after officials in Niigata demanded TEPCO explain why they failed to announce the grave situation for two months. I want a thorough investigation into what went wrong, and I want to know what measures the company has taken to prevent the same thing from happening again. Governor Izumida says a full investigation is needed before negotiations can proceed on whether to allow a nuclear plant to restart in his prefecture. The recent powerful quakes in southwestern Japan are a reminder of how the country remains exposed to natural disasters, with nearly 100 major active faults nationwide. Seismic experts are about to change the way they tell people how dangerous each fault is. Currently, members of a government task force give the probability of the active faults triggering an earthquake within the next 30 years. But these figures tend to be small because such quakes usually occur over a span of thousands of years. The fault thought to have caused the Kumamoto quake was just 0 to 0 0.9 percent. Some say such low numbers create a false sense of security. The experts are now planning to rank the faults on a new four-level scale that uses letters instead of numbers. S will mean the probability of the fault triggering a quake within 30 years is quite high, greater than 3 percent. A will stand for a range of between 0.1 and 3 percent. The rank of Z will signify a probability of less than 0.1 percent. Finally, X will be used when the probability of a quake occurring is unclear but cannot be ruled out. The members say that under the new system, about one-third of the country's 97 faults will be ranked S, the highest level of threat.
Engineers are conducting final checks to restart one more nuclear reactor in Japan. The Ikata power plant would be the third to come back online. Under new, stricter regulations adopted after the 2011 Fukushima nuclear accidents. Engineers are testing whether the reactor's 16 control rods can automatically stop the reactor during an earthquake or other emergencies. Inspectors from the Nuclear Regulation Authority are observing the test. The plant operator wants to restart the reactor on Friday if no problems are found. A nuclear power plant in western Japan is back in operation for the first time in over five years. It is the third to go back online under stricter regulations introduced after the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Shikoku Electric Power Company has restarted the number three reactor at the Ikata plant. On Friday morning, control rods designed to suppress nuclear fission reactions were removed. By Saturday morning, the reactor is expected to achieve a self-sustaining chain reaction. The utility plans to start commercial operation early next month. The move has gotten a mixed reaction from the public. I support the restart as long as it's safe. The local community benefits from the nuclear plant. I'm against restarting the reactor. It would be a tragedy for my grandchildren and all local kids if a nuclear accident happens. The restart was delayed for half a month following a water leak in the cooling system. Utility officials say there have been no problems in the rebooting process. Well, as the Ikata plant goes back online, the operator and local authorities must address an important problem, how to evacuate residents in the event of an emergency. And the local terrain presents a unique set of challenges. NHK World's Chikako Tanaka reports. The Ikata plant has been redesigned to be more resistant to disasters and serious accidents. It includes a new command center and reinforced piping systems. The operator says the plant is now able to withstand even major earthquakes. But questions remain about the evacuation plan. About 5,000 people live on the peninsula where the plant is located. They may not be able to evacuate by land after a nuclear accident. So local officials drew up plans to take them to a neighboring prefecture by boat. They held a drill last November. But they also have to take another factor into account. The Ikata plant is just eight kilometers from an active fault. <laughs> When a fault in the region moved earlier this year, it caused massive earthquakes and mudslides in nearby Kumamoto Prefecture. A powerful earthquake could set off the same kinds of mudslides in Ikata Town, cutting off roads and interfering with operations at the local port. The current evacuation plan calls on residents stranded on the peninsula to evacuate to designated shelters near their homes. Many of the shelters are schools and other public facilities. Their concrete walls provide some protection against the effects of radiation, and the structures have been reinforced against earthquakes. But this shelter is located right in front of a steep hill in the landslide alert zone. The area is vulnerable to mudslides and rock slides. Buildings here could be declared off limits following a quake or heavy rain. Saburo Yamashita lives near the shelter with his elderly mother. She can't travel very far on foot, so Yamashita was counting on being able to use the nearby building. Now he's not sure what to do. No one can guarantee safety following a strong quake like the ones that struck Kumamoto. I have no idea what we'll do if such an earthquake happens. NHK has learned that more than half of the 68 designated shelters in Ikata town are in landslide alert areas.
We asked local officials why they chose shelters in such risky areas. They said that the peninsula's rugged terrain made safer sites difficult to find. One expert says buildings on private property should be considered. If there are no facilities available, they should develop safe evacuation routes that won't get buried in landslides. As officials refine their evacuation strategy, people in the area will continue to hope for the best and plan for the worst. Chikako Tanaka, NHK World, Tokyo. Kagoshima Prefecture's new governor on Friday will ask the operator of a nuclear power plant in the prefecture to suspend operation so safety can be re-evaluated. The two reactors in southwestern Japan went online last year, the first under new regulations imposed by the government. Satoshi Mitazono took office last month. During the election, he promised he would take the plant offline temporarily to double-check safety. Residents have been uneasy since April when damaging earthquakes hit neighboring Kumamoto Prefecture. After taking office, Mitazono visited the Sendai plant to study evacuation measures in the event of an emergency. Mitazono will ask the utility to openly keep the public informed in the event of an accident and promote renewable energy. Kyushu Electric Power had already planned to take the reactors offline for regular inspections that start in fall and winter of this year. As governors have no legal authority to shut down reactors, observers are keen to see how the nuclear operator will react to Mitazono's request. Japan's nuclear regulator says an aging reactor on the Sea of Japan coast has basically met its requirements to remain in operation. This is the second time the Nuclear Regulation Authority has reached such a decision. Kansai Electric Power Company applied last year for permission to allow the Mihama No. 3 reactor to continue operating for another 20 years. The reactor in Fukui Prefecture will be 40 years old this December, the age limit set by the government. Officials at the Nuclear Regulation Authority on Wednesday unanimously agreed on a draft certification of the utility's safety measures. The officials say the measures meet the new requirements set after the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in 2011. The regulator will begin seeking public input for one month starting Thursday, before formally endorsing the documents of certification. The reactor facilities will then be checked in detail for quake resistance and degree of aging. The deadline for final permission is the end of November. Japan's nuclear regulator will change its inspection procedures for nuclear power plants. This will allow tests to be conducted without giving operators any notice. The change follows a recommendation from the International Atomic Energy Agency in January. The Nuclear Regulation Authority presented a draft for the reform plan at its meeting. The plan would allow officials greater flexibility, giving inspectors the ability to check a wider range of safety issues at plants. They would also be able to conduct surprise inspections. Currently, they are pre-scheduled. The change would allow inspectors to focus on perceived trouble spots and high-risk items based on information received beforehand. The Nuclear Authority says these changes will take effect in 2020. Japan's nuclear regulator has discovered another maintenance irregularity at an experimental power plant. The authority found that workers did not follow procedure when an alarm went off at a storage pool for spent nuclear fuel. The incident occurred last November at the Monju fast breed reactor prototype in Fukui Prefecture, central Japan. The reactor is currently offline. The alarm indicated that water inside the storage pool had become dirty. The operation manual says when the alarm sounds, workers must replace ion exchange resin in the water purification system. But the resin wasn't in the system in the first place, and workers didn't add it until May this year. Last year, the authorities said the Japan Atomic Energy Agency was unfit to continue operating the facility where nearly 10,000 safety oversights had been discovered. We have to say that the operator has little understanding of the concept of safety first. The operator said the alarm is not considered urgent. 
as water quality sensors at the plant were more sensitive than the standard. On to other stories now. Sports fans will have a whole lot more to cheer for at the Tokyo Olympics in four years' time. The International Olympic Committee has approved five sports to be added to the Tokyo 2020 Games. On Wednesday, IOC officials approved a proposal by the Tokyo organizers. They agreed to add surfing, skateboarding, karate, sports climbing, plus returning baseball and softball. The new sports will supplement rather than replace regular events. IOC board members studied criteria such as gender equality and whether the sports would appeal to young people before voting on the proposal. The decision to add the five sports will not affect the current quota of sports at the Olympics. Future games would not necessarily have to include the same sports. The Tokyo organizers say the decision means they can now speed up the planning process. Now they have to turn their attention to selecting venues for the new events.